शुक्लांबरथरम विष्णु शशिवर्ण चतुर्भुज प्रसन्न वदन ध्याजेत सर्व विघ्नोपात श्रुते स्मृति पुराणाज करुणाल नमा भगवत्दशंकोकशंक नमस्ते Now we will see the meanings of Sri Vishnu Sahasranama based on Sri Shankara Charya Bhashya for verse 96. First, we will see the verse Sanat Sanatana Tamaha Kapila Kapira Pyaaha Swasti Das Swasti Krit Swasti Swasti Bhuk Swasti Dakshina Ha. The names here in are Sanat Sanatana Tamaha Kapila Ha Kapihi. अप्यय स्वस्तिद स्वस्तिकृत स्वस्ति स्वस्ति भुक् स्वस्ति दक्षिण देर आर टेन नाम हियर इन वी विल सी द मीनिंग्स ऑफ ईच ऑफ दीज वन बै वन द फर्स्ट नाम इज सनाथ सनाति निपात चिरावचन कालश्च पर विकल्पना का वर्ड सनाथ मीन एंशियंट It's a nipata. Even kala is an illusionary creation of the ultimate. So the word sanath refers to chirartha vachana. That is an ancient entity. So who is that ancient entity? Bhagavan Narayana himself. And the word is nipata. Means the word existed as it is. It does not have an etymological derivation. so it's by convention the word exists and it has been associated with the meaning ancient and who else can be ancient than the paramatman the idea of ancient old new etc ancient modern old new etc are relative and the paramatman has existed forever so acharya says that even kala is an illusionary creation of the ultimate <clears throat> to this he brings in a quotation from vishnu purana he says parasya brahmano rupam purusha prathamam dvijaha vyakta vyakte tathaivanye rupe kalaha tatha param so including kala everything has emerged from the paramatman and hence the ancient entity is lord narayana the next nama is sanatana tamaha sarva karanatvat <clears throat> virinchyadi nam api sanatana nam atishayena sanatanatvat sanatana tamaha being the cause of all of even the brahman virinchi the creator etc the one who is most ancient so sanatana tama so sanatana is again uh, chirantana ancient sanatana tamaha the most ancient so <clears throat> the creator virinchi means the brahma chaturmukha brahma who creates the world and even before him existed this paramatman hence he is sanatana tamaha sa esha purvesham api guru kalena anavacheda there is a limitation to the lord in terms of time and hence he is uh, the most ancient purvesham api guru that's how yoga sutra puts the paramatman so kalena anavacheda he is not limited by time the third nama is kapilaha vadavanalasya kapilo varnaha iti tadrupi kapilaha the color of the submarine fire is reddish brown being endowed of that form he is kapilaha the word kapila generally means that which is reddish brown so in this context acharya explains that the vadavanala the fire that is found in the uh, uh, the base of the ocean so that is vadavanala the submarine fire so even that which is in the color of reddish brown that is paramatman previously in various namas we have seen that the paramatman has been glorified as the sun the moon the stars 
the uh, fire etc and even the submarine fire which is under the water so which causes various volcanic or which is in the form of various volcanic eruptions so even that fire even in that form it is the paramatman who shines forth so nothing in the world is bereft of the presence of lord narayana so that is brought about through this nama kapilaha the next nama is kapihi there are a couple of interpretations the first one kam jalam rashmi bihi pibann kapihi surya the one who drinks kam the water through his rays the sun so ka and p are the two components of this nama so acharya explains kam jalam kam refers to jalam water p pibati piban so the one who absorbs or drinks so the one who drinks the water he is kapihi so who is indicated here rashmi bihi piban the sun through his rays he absorbs the water and hence it is the sun who is indicated as kapihi and as we have seen earlier also why does the sun absorb the water sahasra gunam utsrashtum adattehi rasam ravihi ravihi the sun absorbs water from the various water bodies only to give it back in thousand fold sahasra gunam this is how kalidasa puts it sahasra gunam utsrashtum adattehi rasam ravihi so in that most beneficial benevolent manner the sun acts and it is bhagavan narayana whose manifestation is this most benevolent sun even that is the first interpretation the second interpretation kapihi varaho va kapi is varaha the wild boar kapir varaha shreshthascha iti vachanat so in mahabharata we see a quotation where kapi is uh varaha the wild boar so there is another interpretation which have been indicated previously also so kam pati the one who protected the earth so to protect the bhumata bhagavan incarnated in the form of varaha and hence kapi also indicates the varaha avatar so kapi refers to the surya swarupa of bhagavan or the kapihi refers to the varaha avatar the next nama is apyayaha pralaye asmin apiyanti jaganti iti apyayaha the one into whom all beings get dissolved into during the time of pralaya so apyaya apiyanti iti apyaya so getting dissolved into that is what is referred by apyaya what get dissolved what gets dissolved jaganti all the worlds they get dissolved dissolved into whom asmin in him in bhagavan narayana so everything during the pralaya attains its substratum that is bhagavan narayana hence being the substratum of dissolution of all the worlds he is glorified by this nama apyayaha the sixth nama is swasti daha bhaktanam swasti mangalam dadati ti swasti daha the one who grants well being to the devotees so swasti daha has two components swasti and da swasti acharya says mangalam is auspiciousness well being so daha the one who grants so the one who grants well being to whom does he grant well being bhaktanam to the devotees those who are devoted to bhagavan narayana and express their devotion through shravana kirtana archana vandana dasya by just even offering flowers water fruits etc they are the bhaktas and for them 
Bhagavan ensures their well-being. So hence he is Swastidaha. The next Nama is Swastikrit. Tadeva Karotiti Swastikrit. The one who does the same well-being. So here Swasti and Krit are the components. So previously it was a Swasti and the. Here it is Swasti and Krit. Tadeva Karoti. Mangalameva Karoti. So the one who only gives well-being to his devotees. So for some devotees, the Mangalam or the auspiciousness or the ultimate well-being may come in a difficult way. Just like for uh, Shishupala, Ravana and others, ultimately they achieved or attained the highest Mangalam, auspiciousness, moksha, the abode of Bhagavan Narayana. But it came in a difficult way. For some others, it comes in a pleasant way. So whichever way it is, it is Bhagavan who grants, who creates this auspiciousness and Mangalam. The eighth Nama is Swasti. Mangala Swarupam Atmiyam Paramananda Lakshanam Swasti. The one who is auspicious in the form of the highest bliss. So, previously Bhagavan was glorified as Swastidaha, Swastikrit, etc. The one who grants Swasti or the one who creates well-being, etc. But this Nama says that the well-being itself is Bhagavan. So, Mangalam, Rupam, Atmiyam. So, the very form of Bhagavan is Swasti. The Bhagava, Bhagavan himself, Lord Narayana himself is Swasti. Which kind of Swasti? What kind of auspiciousness? Parama Ananda Lakshanam. It is in the form of highest bliss. There is no mixing of misery or even an iota of suffering is mixed there. Not even an iota of suffering is mixed there and it is pure unalloyed bliss. That is the form of Bhagavan and that is Mangalam and that is Swasti and that is Bhagavan even. So hence the Swasti itself is Bhagavan. The ninth Nama is Swasti Bhukha. Today there are a couple of interpretations. So the first one Tadeva Bhungta Yiti Swasti Bhukha. The one who experiences, enjoys well-being in the form of Jivatman. Here, Swasti and Bhuk are the two components. Swasti, as has been indicated, is well-being, auspiciousness. And Bhuk, Bhungte, the one who enjoys, experiences. So, Paramatman is not only the grantor or the giver of well-beings. He is the one who experiences the well-being even in the form of Jivatman. We know that the Paramatman and Jivatman are not two different entities. They are one and the same. So in the form of Jivatman, it is he who enjoys the well-being and the auspicious state. Bhaktanam Mangalam Swasti Bhunakti Tiva Swasti Bhukha. The one who takes care of the well-being of the devotees. So the second interpretation uh, here also sees the word in two parts. Swasti and Bhukha. Swasti is Mangalam, well-being, auspiciousness. And Bhukha here is uh, interpreted slightly differently. Previously, Bhukha was seen as Bhungte Iti Bhukha. Here, Bhunakti Iti Bhuk. So the word bhunakti, which also de is derived from the root bhuj in its parasmaipadi form, means palayati, means the one who takes care of. So the one who takes care of swasti. Previously, the one who experiences, enjoys swasti, well-being. Here, the one who takes care of swasti, swasti bhunakti. Whose swasti or whose well-being is taken care of by Bhagavan Bhaktanam. So as has been 
presented earlier the nahi kalyana krit kashchit durgatim tata gachati even a little amount of good things done by a person so he will never attain misery he will be happy only so the well being of such a person is taken care of by bhagavan the next nama is swasti dakshinah there are a few interpretations swasti rupena dakshate vardhate iti swasti dakshinah the one who is in the form of growing well being so here the two parts are swasti and dakshinah so swasti is well being and dakshinah dakshate vardhate so uh for some well being is suddenly granted for others according to their karma it gradually blossoms their well being so their movement from misery to well being it is a gradual process for others it may happen all at once but for others it may gradually blossom into complete well being it may be a gradual process so the one who blossoms gradually into well being the one who gradually grows into the state of well being from misery and sorrow he is swasti dakshinah so such gradual procession or process of attainment of swasti that is also bhagavan so uh, the idea is that one should be patient to attain the well being so <clears throat> after immediately praying to bhagavan if we expect if we, sometimes people may not get so it may be bhagavan may have decided that we attain well being in a gradual manner based on our karma hence he is the one who gradually blossoms into our well being so that acceptance that patience is advised in attaining karma phala in attaining the phala of our bhakti from the bhagavan through this nama the second interpretation swasti datum samartha iti va swasti dakshina <clears throat> so here also the word swasti and dakshina so these are the two parts <clears throat> the one who is capable of granting all that is auspicious previously the word dakshina was interpreted as growing well being dakshate vardhate here dakshah or dakshinah refers to samarthah the one who is capable so the one who is capable of granting swasti he is the one he is the only one who is capable of granting well being so in our difficulties in our miseries and sorrows whom should we seek whose lotus feet should we remember it is the feet of bhagavan narayana because he is the one who can grant us all well being he is capable of granting well being with that shraddha with that bhakti we should remember bhagavan narayana in times of difficulties there is a third interpretation athava dakshina shabdah aashukarini vartate shigram swasti datum ayame eva samarthah iti yasya smarana deva sidhyanti sarva siddhayah or the word dakshina refers to the one who does things quickly swiftly the one who is capable of granting well being quickly the one by remembering whom all success is attained so this is an interesting interpretation where acharya presents a contrasting meaning to that of the first one so where the first one first interpretation say says that the one who gradually grows into the well being the process of attainment may be slow but uh, here acharya says dakshina shabdah aashukarini vartate the word dakshina in sanskrit tradition or convention is also used to a person who does things quickly swiftly 
so if we say a person is dakshina it means he does things in an efficient and a quick manner he doesn't delay or procrastinate so acharya says shigram so swasti dakshina means the one who grants well being quickly so so who can grant our well being who can change our fortunes uh, in just a wink of the eye it is bhagavan so here acharya packs in two meanings one is the one who quickly grants well being and who is the only one who is capable of granting well being quickly shigram datum ayam eva samarthah so he contrasts this interpretation with the, with the first interpretation and incorporates the meaning of the second interpretation along with this third interpretation so samarthah that meaning is also taken in while contrasting with the first interpretation so by just remembering for some bhaktas by just remembering the name of bhagavan narayana all well being they descend all success is attained hence bhagavan is the quick giver the swift grantor of all well being so uh, acharya brings in a few quotations from the scriptures to indicate that by merely remembering bhagavan remembering the nama of bhagavan all well being manifest smrte sakala kalyan bhajanam yatra jayate purushastam ajam nityam vrajami sharanam harim smarana deva krishnasya papa sanghata panjaram shatadha bhedamayati girer vajrahato yatha so from brahma purana and also krishna amrita maharanava we see that by just remembering the lotus feet or remembering the beautiful form of bhagavan all our miseries come to an end and all well being all happiness all auspiciousness attend to us thus with these 10 namas in verse 96 we have thus far seen 905 namas om tat sat shri krishnarpanamastu